Hello everyone, back with more BCS today on this fine Monday. Uh, whew, I've been busy, um, just messing around. I've been having a lot of fun editing and creating shorts and videos. As you know, I'm like a avid film creator dude, so uh, I've been having a lot of fun just doing like history hits, shorts, videos, and stuff like that. Uh, anyway, I also run a uh, NFL history Instagram account with over 30,000 followers, so that does keep me very busy on the weekends and such. All right, so uh, now I'm back in BCS uh, trying to do um, learning things of stuff that I did not get in my tutorials for the Battalion Combat System from MMP. If you have not, check out my BCS playlist where there are tutorials and examples up on my channel, I will link those in the description from uh, 2022, around September or so, when the Series 2 rules hit, maybe? I can't remember. I think it's uh, right around Brazen Chariots, maybe, time, somewhere in there. Uh, I've been a little bit stagnant on World War II lately, so i um, thinking about getting Valley of Tears out, but I wanted to make sure I had the basics of the system down. And I've forgotten a lot of it. So if you go back and look at my videos, I did have it and then I lost it. Uh, okay, so one of the things I wanted to practice today was engagements, uh, which is a ranged attack, basically. But I wanted to do, this is a sample set up with the uh, Air Corps uh, with the bigger counters in the map. Hexes are bigger, so I could actually see what I'm doing, and you could see what I'm doing as well. So this is again. Look, I'm learning. This is not a full tutorial video, but I'm going to do this as I go along. I'm going to start with a activation from the top with the 21st Panzer Division, <clears throat> and we're going to go up against the. Uh, we have a second Cav company on the board here on this point of interest that I'm just going to pick on. I just want to try an engagement because I did not do an example of a long range shot here uh, first the 29th. <coughs> oh man, sorry. Uh, first the 29th uh, battalion here from the 21st Panzer. I wanted to try to take a shot and see if I could do a full activation and then do a maybe a second activation, but do the whole thing from the top complete with uh, a. MSR check to a supply source. Now look, this is not an actual scenario from the game. So uh, before you go thinking that this is uh, actually from uh, a scenario from the game, it is not. I just put these counters out and I set up a, a perfect example so I could try to take a pot shot at this unit because I need to get this, I need to get these rules uh, um, under wraps here. I'll never figure this system out. Before I do this, I'm going to post a there's going to be a history segment coming up here on the 21st Panzer Division as it pertains to this battle, sort of. So if you want, as you know, I like to post a lot of history stuff here. Uh, you, if you're on your phone, get ready to tap ahead like four taps or something. It's going to be about 20 seconds long uh, if you don't want to suffer through it. I know some people hate the video interludes or whatever, um, but that's part of this channel. So if you don't want to see that, just be prepared to skip. If you want to watch it, fine, or go to the bathroom or whatever. So that'll be coming up, and then I'll be right back with uh, a full an activation with an engagement at range, and then you guys can uh, let me know how, if I fuck it up or whatever. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that. Let me know if it sucked. All right, uh, now, we have here a red AV hard with the yellow symbol in the background here. This is a red AV unit. Okay, we have an armor value of four. The action rating is three. The range, it's always assumed to be one hex unless there's a number, a uh, different number down below there. Uh, here it's a two. Now, one of the things I like about BCS is at the, I think it's at the back. 
<clears throat> if I can find it, let me see here. I like this uh, list back here in the rule book. Um, it's kind of cool if you're trying, trying to get your head around what the units mean in this game. If you go back on page uh, 38, series two rules, uh, hard red AV can be any of these. So, I mean, this could be a Panzer III. You know, you got to take your dates into example. This is 1944. It's possible. Yeah, see, this is, darn it. Well, it's not up to date. Does anyone know where I can get an up to date one for this? See, because it doesn't have Aerocorp back here. But anyway, if you've got this game up here, you can kind of match what vehicles there are back here. It'd be kind of cool if they updated this list. I was kind of hoping maybe the same vehicles would carry over, but it didn't. But it kind of gives you an idea of what you're fighting with back here. So, uh, especially Panzer's Last Stand, which I have, Brazen Chariots, I do. Probably won't get these two. Uh, I'm over the bulge, and Baptism, I don't know. Like I mentioned before, it doesn't have those color-coded bars, man. It's going to throw me off, but yeah. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're playing those other games, check this page out. It helps you kind of get uh, in your head uh, what, what, what these units what they might be representing on the counters. Okay, so like I was saying, the goal here is to try to do a long-range shot. Now that in this game is uh, defined as an engagement. I believe that is the proper term. And in the rule book, it is defined as uh, they represent AV armed units, okay, and I do believe I have my trusty pointer back somewhere if I haven't lost it, which I probably have. I'm extremely disorganized today. I don't think I was ready for a video. Uh, it represents a AV armed units exchanging fires, as they say in the rule book. It should be exchanging fire. Only the active player initiates engagements, which will be me at this point. Resolve them on the engagement table. Okay, and we're looking at page 28 on this book I'm looking right up here. If you're wondering how I found this, I went to the back of the book and first I had to find out which one was considered range. So I looked through all the things. I saw red AV and found engage. It's capable of engage. And I went into 5.2 and started to read about it. Very handy chart here. Okay. All right, I have found you. All right. Engagement fires. A qualified active AV unit, which is not in support here. He's not in support. If you want to know about support, uh, look at my some of my other videos in the series. I may be doing another one. The more of these I do, the more I understand it. It helps me to put them, to do it live, and then put them up and have people chastise me. All right, so we have that. I'm going to be active. I have not activated the HQ yet. Here is my supply train. We'll get into that whole thing in a jig in a second. I'm going to tilt the camera like this so you can get a full view of how I've perfectly set this up. You'll notice that the supply train is not on a track. It is on a, what do they call that? A primary road. So it's perfectly set up, I believe. We got one, two, three, four, five. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, the limitations on this range, visibility and blocking terrain, restricts how far away a target can be engaged. Uh, I made sure it's pretty much open, so I don't think we're going to have some trouble through here. The fire's range affects if the target can be engaged at all. The target's range affects if the fire can take losses, if the target can use multiple support DRM. Now, I may not have, I may have to Put, now, normally there would probably be an HQ out here that might have some sort of support to aid in this example. And I probably should have done that. But I want to make this as basic as possible. So there would probably be uh, a support possibly out there that would aid this. But let's not go there today, please. It is important to note that if this was a support unit, measure the target's range on the support's counter from the host back to the firer. From the host, it, uh, but I'm not really sure what that would mean. Engagements require the expenditure of one fire event but do not cost movement points. If a unit no longer has a fire event, you cannot in initiate it. 
Uh, let's see. Target is a support unit. Measure the target's range on the support counter from the host back to the fire. Okay. So I think that would mean that if there is a support unit here, um, that was being used by this host or something, you would measure from there. So if I was lobbing a shell onto a support unit, you would measure from the host. Tricky wording, but I believe that's what they mean. Okay, uh, you can initiate an engagement at any point in the movement. Now, another thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make this unit better. So when I activate, I think I'm going to do in a flipsy doodle, and I'm going to be putting him on that side. I should still have enough movement to get within the two. Well, now his range becomes a three. I should have enough to get here, and then one, two, three, and then fire. Uh, I believe that would be a good move, and it makes him stronger. So we'll see how that goes. So we'll test that out here in a second. And of course, the OCs uh, do not affect uh, the ability to engage. There's no need for the fire to be able to uh, enter the target's X in any way, nor is there ever advance after combat in any engagement, no matter what the results. Uh, engagements do not require the target to be in an objective zone, but I'm going to place one anyway here in the upcoming example. Choose the target unit with the greatest AV and or range in the uh, in the following priority order. We've only got one target, so we don't need to worry about that, but there is a list on page 29, so you want to <clears throat> take a close example of um, these categories here. When you pick a target... And a given target can be engaged any number of times, which is kind of cool. You can really shell the, the heck out of a, a unit if you want to do some damage to it. Now, is this a smart move? I don't even know. I don't know the, the, the logistics of this game, if this is even smart, or if I should be doing this to, you know, if it's smart or if I should be doing this to, is this the right move to, to budge this unit out of the way? I don't know. I know there's certain things you want to do against infantry, but again, this is just an example. Um... Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, okay. The reason I picked that unit is because I looked. Um, I looked back here, and um, dual and red AV can be the target of an engagement, and then I can be the fire, and it can be the target. I looked at. Um, I was looking at attack capable unit with no support. I noticed they can't be the target of an engagement. So you can't you can't shoot long range at just like infantry? Is that my am I seeing that right? Attack capable unit with no support, you cannot uh shoot them with a tank gun. I guess that makes sense. Because it would be pretty hard to hit them, right? Because they're dispersed. I mean I guess I get that. Uh, light AV and screen units cannot be engagement fires, but they can be targets. Support can only be engagement targets. All right, so you're going to resolve this by rolling two dice on the engagement table, adding any modifiers. Support uses the host's action rating to compute the target base differential. All right. Uh, place any resulting traffic marker in the firing unit text. All right, so I suppose we should start at the top and try this activation thing. I've been practicing this as well. So let's uh, take a look at that. I'll get the uh, little chart here. Again, this video is not for experts, okay? If you're just starting out, you'll wanna watch this. If you're an expert, you're just gonna wanna walk on by, okay? Walk on by. So let's say We are here. All right, identify the formation to activate. Flip the HQ to its use side. All right, we're gonna activate 21st Panzer. Now, um, when I play this solo, and I, don't, I might be doing Valley of Tears, I don't know yet. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna really do myself in. I'm gonna be putting these in a cup and I'm gonna be drawing these randomly, just straight up random. So, let's say I pull this. If it was Panzer's last stand, we'd have to do that whole new activation thing. So we're going to flip the HQ here. And you'll notice there's some uh, artillery points here. 
I'm not going to be using those right now, but we're going to flip them over. He's got that reactivation uh, of a five there. That'll come in later. Um, so we won't worry about that too much right now. But I do have, in case there's some weird modifiers, I do have this handy dandy uh, micro die with me that we'll put out. And these might come in handy a little bit later. I can move these around the board and put them down if I need different modifiers. So we'll put that out. And so we're going to be activating this HQ. And we have a prep. Uh, add or increase the active formations MSR blocked marker if the formations combat trains are off. Okay, so we got to check for the uh, MSR. Create, maintain, or remove the active formations prepared defense marker. We're not going to be doing that. All right, we need to check for the MSR, I believe. We have to do that right now, I think. So normally on the activation, we'd be checking for, to see uh, if it's a previous turn, to see if our uh, MSR uh, gets, gets better or if it clears itself, if it's not blocked, etc. So we're going to check right now to see if it's fine, which it is. I'll show you why. Uh, an MSR has to have three criteria met, and it's from the HQ to the MSR to the supply source, and you want it to be optimal uh, for that snafu roll later. And I've set this up perfectly so that it is, and you can see we're going from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, optimal is five to 15. So we're going primary road back to the, the supply train, back to the source. So we've covered uh, that. We're in great shape here. And we have nothing else on the board, so it's not uh, mixed or anything weird like that. So we can pretty much just not worry about that right now uh, because I've set it up that way. And if you want to read about that, you're looking at page 16 in the rule book. But I just wanted to gloss over that, and I've set it so that uh, that's an easy flyby. Okay, now we're ready to do the most one of the most important rolls, and that's the snafu roll to see how many um, how many uh, if it's a four partial activation, etc. All that fun stuff. We get to roll two dice, and we do have some snafu table modifiers that we need to check. And of course, I've pretty much set this up so that it's going to be. Very friendly to myself, yours truly. All right, so from the way I see it, we're at plus two on this roll because we have, and we're not using any game-specific snafu modifiers or anything that, we have a, we're at fresh fatigue, and we have a um, optimal distance MSR, so I believe that's plus two on the snafu roll. And we are going to go ahead and uh, roll, and that does save us from having a fail. Let's see what we get. <laughs> uh, a seven. We got a full activation. Hey, can you believe it? I actually rolled decently live on camera. That's amazing. All right. All right, so you definitely want to get on that full chart because it gives us two objectives and bink, bonk, bink, bonk, bink, bonk, bink. We're doing good, all green. And uh, so, uh, 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 uh. I'll probably need to read about where to place these. I'll probably want to do a just a double on here. I don't. I'm not sure if that has any effect. I'm going blind here. If that has any effect on what I'm about to do, I don't. I'm not sure. You know what? I'm not even going to look. I will surprise myself when in the time comes on the modifiers. We're gonna do a double. <laughs> I'm gonna do a double tap. Uh, we're gonna do a double objective on this point of interest. Yep, we're gonna do it right there and see what happens. First, let me make sure that's legal. Okay, well, wouldn't you know it? Uh, objective markers aren't needed for engagement attacks. Looking at this, uh, it looks like. The one, object, the one exception is that engagement table fires do not need an objective zone at all. So mm, in a different world, I'd probably be happy. But I, mean, I guess for this example, really, I don't need those objective markers. Ooh, okay, so uh, you can place some uh, or none of your available objective uh, markers 
anywhere you like at any distance from the HQ. They must be in a hex containing an enemy non-support unit and or victory hex designation. Oh, I see. Okay. So actually that was a legal place. So I do have to put them there. Non-support. Okay. They cannot be moved or removed until the cleanup phase. They have an arrow on their counter to offset the marker if desired. Okay, so right there. So I technically did have to put them there. So that's cool. All right. So remember, uh, if you're looking at page 18 on the book, objective uh, marker creates a two hex radius objective zone. So there is a radius around here. It won't come in handy in this example, but just kind of remember that uh, when you play the game. And I think I do cover that in one of my other uh, egg examples. Um, on the engagement table, not sure if the double objective will give me a DRM, but we'll see. Probably does not. Okay, um, another cool feature about this game is the recon objective, which I love it because um, that's one thing I do like. Uh, if you look back on my previous examples, placing objectives, you'll see where uh, I did a Panzer's Last Stand Hungarian cavalry objective, and I know in the video example they can't do that, but um, I did it. I used them as just an example. But if you look, the cavalry in this game or recon units has a cool ability to go ahead, scout ahead, and place objective markers. So it actually gives you the feel that they they have a purpose, and they can do neat things like that. So they can extend your ability to go go forward, explore, screen, and stuff like that. So you may want to check that video out. Uh, in my playlist for BCS. Okay, so it's time to do the move, uh, and we're on to activities now, and you can do uh, barrages uh, before, during, or after any unit's movement. Uh, units move individually, not as stacks. Important. So you're going to have to break your previous war game uh, knowledge when it comes to that individually, not as stacks. I gotta break my mind from that. I gotta like relearn stuff. It's gonna be weird. One unit must end its movement for the phase before you start another. You cannot go back. <laughs> you stop and or finish during the course of the activation. See stop finish chart for a full list of causes. A unit that is not finished but is done moving and the player has started moving some other unit cannot use any remaining fire events or MPs but can assist spot for barrages okay so basically we want to we want to do a movement here with this guy and we need to go over the rules of flippy flopping and changing modes i know you can not you can only flip you can't flip back and forth you can only do it once but i definitely want to put him on the the, the uh deployed side okay here's the air core uh train effects chart Oh, and I did, uh, I highlighted, uh, I don't have this book, Patton versus the Panzers, the Battle of Air Corps, September 1944. I don't have this. That's why it's highlighted, because I want to take a look at it. All right, here's the train effects, and we're dealing with tack movement. That's the red there. So we're looking at primary roads one half. Oops, sorry about that. So I believe we're just going to be going down this primary road, so... Yeah, getting getting close is not going to be a pro. I think that's a primary road. Yeah. Primary road has the white. Secondary is the thick brown. That threw me off a little bit too because I always felt like the bigger, chunky road would be primary. Let me just double check that, but it's not. It's the white one. Okay, so that kind of threw me off on the map. So we'll be going one half for the movement here. And I think we should be okay. Um, terrain for combat barrage, uh, point of interest, all good there. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we have any issues here with terrain. So I think I've set this up to be completely clear. All right. Now let's take a look at flipping that guy over. Okay. A unit can only flip before... Uh, beginning activities, you can only flip the appropriate, you can only flip once per activation, and you can only flip with the appropriate safe path, see 1.9, you function based on the value showing its face down side has no effect at all. All right, so I forgot about safe paths. I'm not going to go over that. Uh, I think I'm pretty clear with the safe path here, and don't forget this is your 
uh, HQ's command radius here. Uh, I do need to check the safe. I will just double check it off camera, but you'll want to read 1.9 in the rule book. I think I'm in the clear here, but I will just check it. Okay, so it's actually probably good that I went over the safe path thing because I believe that I don't need to worry about a safe path to flip tack movement to tack movement. I believe you're only going to need that to flip leg movement to tack truck. Uh, you're going to need to be coordinated. You're going to need to talk to the HQ. The trucks are going to have to come back from the HQ. The troops are going to have to mount up. It's a heavy coordination deal. You're going to have to get the transports back on time. That's why you need a safe path. I can understand the command and the control that they're going for there. Look, I get it. I get it. Uh, been there, done that. I know what that's like. It's a heavy, uh, it's a big problem if that doesn't go off without a hitch. Uh, so, reading uh, page 10, I don't think I need to worry about that here, the safe path. But if you're curious, you should read about it. It is the command radius plus five hexes. I don't think I need to worry about it here. We're going to flip him at the beginning of the activation. We're going to go ahead and move. And again, I just want to get within range uh, to... I'm going to move this like so. We're down to four. Uh, let's see here. One and a half, one. We just want to get right about there. And we're going to do an engagement shot here. I hope I'm doing this right. And then we're going to see what happens. Now, if I do the... Uh, I'm still a little bit confused about stopped and finished. I believe if I do this attack and then go to move another unit, that would make him stopped. And I, uh, I'm confused at that point. Uh... what the differentials are between stopped and finished. I believe once you're finished, you're done, done. But when you're stopped, you can still spot um, initiate engagements, attack, attack by fire. I guess I'm just not sure how that would all come in. And he would be stopped if he moved into a uh, tactical movement and you go into an armored vehicle enemy zone of control but none of that's happening but I like to attack use a fire event attack and then maybe do another fire event and then that would make him stopped or I could fire event and go to move someone else and at that point he would be stopped are there markers for that I haven't even checked because I'm going to forget a lot of things all right, so we'll do a fire event here. You get two fire events, if I'm not mistaken. And let's see if I can do this. Now, at first I did have questions about, there's a rule here um, I found very interesting about engagement terrain, the targets. Uh, 5.2B, uh, section four, if the target's hex contains terrain, in quotes, or if the target itself is in prepared defense, the maximum engagement range is reduced to one hex. Yikes. Now, I looked at point of interest, and uh, the, ter the uh, point of interest for movement is listed as other terrain, and then dash, dash, dash. So terrain for combat barrage is a dash. So we're not reduced to... Uh, one hex here. It's just a point of interest. So uh, that was close. I almost uh, messed up my own example there. So that does not take effect here. Okay, so we're going to be rolling two dice. Um, let's take a look at our modifications here. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, double objective zone does, does matter in an engagement. Um, the base for each side is its AV plus its action rating. So it's a good thing I flipped this over. We're looking at an 8 here. 5 plus 3 is 8. Uh, so we're at 9. That's kind of cool. Target only. Uh, multiple supports. Prepared defense. Nope. Yeah, woo -woo. That's bad. There's really not... Oh, target is real AV. No. It's dual. Uh, target is support. No. So we'll be rolling... Uh, Oh, this tells you what, this is the table that you want to roll on. There's two tables, and you want to go up here, I believe. 
uh, because it's not support. So we'll be rolling on this table. Uh, target only. Prepare defense and or multiple supports. No. Non-support stand up. No. Okay. So this should come off rather well, I believe. So we'll see. I got a 9 for the uh, Panzer here, for the 21st Panzer. So 5 plus 8 and a double objective, that should be a 9. Okay, I've added the math to the table here. You guys can let me know if I do this right later. I'm getting a 9 against a 5. There's a plus 4 DRM uh, because you take the 9 minus 5 is plus 4, and then there's the plus 1 due to the double objective here. Uh, I don't think there's anything else for the Defender. And I guess that makes sense because this is a lightly armored recon unit, and you have some hard uh, panzers coming in and blasting these trucks or recon units. Uh, I th well, let me move this. This is to remind me that they've done a fire event, number one. Uh, so, I mean, I'm guessing that this, is, this should be a fairly... This is accurate, I think. Um, each hex is a kilometer, though. Um, is that realistic? I guess it is. I'm just having trouble in my head uh, visualizing. I know you don't... I know it's not, like, a unit. I guess they're at two kilometers. Um, am I being too picky? Anyway. All right. So, let's see what happens here i believe i have these right i hope i did the math right now it should be noted that there's no risk of a firing loss in this combat because the panzers are out of range of this uh lightly armored cav uh cav unit here so this is a pretty smart move i thought um so the panzers should come out of this fairly unscathed on this first fire event and if this goes poorly for the Americans, there's no need to do a, the rest of the video on the second fire event. Okay, surely there's no way that even I can screw this up. Uh, so let's see what happens here. Uh, we have plus four. We're looking... Damn, nine or more? Okay. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, nine or more. Target loss and retreat. That is perfect, folks. We're going to force them off that point of interest, and that's what we were looking to do. I like it. Hey, look, folks, don't make me like this game system. Don't you, don't you effing do it. Now, I flipped something out real quick here. Let me show you something really cool. This is a recon unit, and as such, you can put it into a screen, okay? This kind of makes it into a harasser unit. Now, let's say I rolled really bad. Say I rolled, uh, what I have, a four? Say I rolled a four. And got an eight. Um, when that happens, and you get a both loss, uh, if the target is a screen, you convert both loss result to no losses. Target retreats three hexes. I found this to be fascinating. Again, a really cool feature for the recon unit. The recon unit is enforced to retreat three hexes. I have to read the the rules on retreating. Uh, you know, yeah, the soil's flying up all around this unit, and you see tents going up, and they're, well, not tents, but, you know, maybe a few trucks get lit up, and they're like, hey, fall back. I don't know if you remember that scene from Band of Brothers where the Germans came up over the hill, and they had half tracks, and uh, the guys beat them back, you know, with machine gun fire, and then the Shermans came in and saved the day, and the Germans had to retreat back up over the hill, and uh, that's what that reminds me of. Anyway. Uh, so, you know, maybe then, you know, the recon unit falls back. They're like, okay, well, we've, uh, we've found the Germans and, uh, we're going to, we're going to fall back here. Uh, three hexes, you know, no loss, uh, but they did fall back and then maybe the Germans come in and take the point of interest, etc. Uh, so it's some fucking cool shit. All right. Uh, anyway, but as it was, uh, there is a loss to this unit and the poor second cab, the, uh, the 42nd, uh, Unit the forty second here is uh, this poor company is they weren't expecting that as the Germans roll up on them and uh, as they have one step they are removed from the board and that's that okay this video is long I know uh, but I'm trying to learn the system I think it's starting to make sense uh, and I gotta say I kind of did uh, now look this is a zoomed in OCS it's not. OCS. OCS is a front game. It's 
the entire front. So it really depends on what you like to do. This is a zoomed in thing. It's not the front. I get that. Uh, so, you know, OCS, I like, to, I like to leave set up and come down and go, look what I have done. Look at as the, as the months pass, look how the front has changed. Um, so let's say I finish the activation. Let's just say I'm done. I don't know. I got to remember, like, so say he's, uh, what would that be? Finished? I got to get my terminology straight. Anyway, if it's finished, let's say we put this on him. Just so I remember he's finished. Um, say the whole formation's done. We would go to fatigue and you always take the one worst thing that would cause the chance to cause the most fatigue. We did combat objectives and an engagement. So we would do a fatigue roll. Oh, um, all right, hold on. Let me make sure I get this straight. I have to do this in the right order. Oh, it's per, it's before the next activation roll. So we would on a one or two, because we did combat objectives and, an engagement so you take the worst of the two so on a one to two we would get some fatigue here okay so no fatigue then when we go to the activation and we would try to make another activation and that's where this little die roll here comes in for this HQ right there so I believe we do a cleanup at the end of that and I think you remove these Flip combat trains, blah, blah, blah. Check for fatigue, just did that. Check for isolation. Second activation. Okay. Roll to attempt second activation plus one if fresh. All right. Now, of course, I had, I could have kept moving this guy, but I just want to get on. Oh, plus one if fresh. So I think I actually got that. Yeah, so according to this, I would be able to go again. And then there would be more fatigue later on, I believe. Yeah, second activation would cause me to be... What does attack sequence mean? I'll have to check on that. I'm not sure I did that fatigue roll. Look at the attack sequence. Attack sequence. Um, I believe, I'm not sure what that means. I'll have to look that up. Okay, so anyway, uh, let me know what that means on the fatigue table. I think that's anything other than, um, I'm talking about this. I think this is any other attack other than what's listed here, right? Like a shock attack or something, regular attack. So let me know. Um, all right. Thanks for watching, everyone. It's kind of starting to click, but I just have to get the ZOCs down now when I'm moving. Thanks.